Good morning. My name is Derek Mall, and I understand that you guys are going to be studying my book, Get Real, A Spiritual Journey for Men, over the next few weeks. Uh, my other claim to fame is that I know your pastor, the most excellent Stephen Gregg. We met last year when uh, we traveled the Holy Lands together, a trip that took us through Egypt, Jordan, into Israel. Uh, Steve was one of the leaders and uh, made it a wonderful trip, relaxing, one of the best experiences my wife Rebecca and I have ever had. And so when he contacted me a few weeks ago to say that he was considering using some of my upper room materials uh, for the men's ministry at your church, I, I was excited for many reasons. One, because it's always a real thrill to have the opportunity to be involved in the spiritual growth of other men throughout the United States, and, and also because somebody that I respect so much will be involved with the leadership. So what I intend to do right now over the next oh, five or six minutes or so is to answer a few questions that Steve had for me. Uh, one, you know, why did I write Get Real? Um, two, why did I particularly pick the four D's which are uh, um, commented on the different sections of the book? And then a little bit about my experience uh, as a writer and leading men's ministry. Um, so to get to the first question, you know, why did I write this book? Um, I didn't write this until I was 50 years old, and in a number of ways, I don't think I, w I was ready to write it until then, because like all of us, my spiritual journey has been up and down, and over the years I've, I've learned a lot of different things, and have accumulated a little bit of wisdom over time. Uh, what has been happening with me personally is I've worked in special education as a classroom teacher with the public schools for over two decades. Uh, then I became a freelance writer and wanted to really concentrate on uh, communicating uh, the message of what it means to follow Jesus to as wide an audience as possible. Uh, I've had newspaper columns in uh, local and regional newspapers. Um, I've written articles for a number of magazines. That's how the folk at the upper room uh, learned about me. And, and all the time, I've been leading a Wednesday evening men's spiritual formation group at the First Presbyterian Church of Brandon here in Florida, where my wife has been the pastor for the last 16 years. We've had an incredible experience. Uh, it was a church which was uh, essentially um, floundering when we arrived, losing members, um, no vibrancy, no sense of, of what they were about. And over the last few years, we've had the, uh, the privilege of seeing people's lives turned around completely. And so that the question of, of church membership has really gone aside and what we're interested in now is what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus. And it's a question we explore with my men's group on Wednesday evening, which is a small group. Uh, we try to have no more than between 12 and 16 men involved at any given time. And I noticed that there were certain principles, um, certain uh, milestones, if you will, that were consistent with men over time. And so I decided it would be a great idea uh, to write a book explaining some of that story um, to other men who were interested in actually moving forward in their relationship with Jesus, uh, changing from being pew-sitting church members to vibrant followers of Jesus Christ. In fact, in my own experience, I've actually stopped telling people I'm a Christian, say I sit next to somebody on the airplane, and uh, if I tell them I'm a Christian, the conversation is quickly closed off because they think they already know what is meant by a Christian. And all these negative assumptions come into play. So instead, I say that I'm a follower of the way of Jesus. And typically the response is, 
what? What do you mean by that? And so then we have a chance to have the conversation. And this is what was going on with my men's group. And I also, as a second reason for writing this book, have noticed over time that a lot of vibrant men's ministry um, seems to have been associated with maybe a political frame of reference. Um, as if the only way you could be um, a Christian, a Christian man, was to also be all these things politically. When, of course, we know that Jesus is interested in, in grace and mercy and, and servanthood and service to the world. Um, not a political affiliation. And so I thought it was important that there was a book available for moderate, mainline Christian men that says, hey, you know, we're Methodists, we're Presbyterians, uh, we're Lutherans, uh, we're Episcopalians, and we are excited about Jesus too. And so the book came out of my desire to communicate that to the world, and also to write about what had been going on in my own small group of friends, uh, my um, company of, of believers, um, or as my friend David Dale, who is a Southwest 737 pilot, says, the gathering of most excellent dudes. So, to you, gathering of most excellent dudes at Stephen Gregg's church. Uh, this book is broken down into to four sections. Essentially, I wanted to talk about a fourth dimension, that we live our life in three dimensions, but when you add following Jesus, it adds a fourth dimension, which is really only possible for us to embrace in terms of a relationship with Jesus. And so, four dimensions, four Ds. The four Ds are this. First of all, D is for desire. We have to want to move forward in our relationship with God. It's got to be something intentional. Because unless we want it, God is not going to intrude into our spiritual lives. And so the first thing is to say, hey, take a spiritual inventory. Where do I stand? Do I want to grow in my faith? And if the answer is yes, then the second D is discipleship. And of course, the word disciple comes from the word discipline. And discipline means to apply some deliberate principles to the idea of moving forward. A good example is uh, when I turned 50 years old, I went to see my doctor and I had a, an evaluation. And uh, she said, hey, you're overweight. Hey, your cholesterol is too high hey, your triglycerides are off the chart. Hey, we need to do something. And she threatened me with medication and all sorts of stuff. And I was like, no, no, no give me some time. I'll, I'll, well, I'll come back in six months and we'll have this conversation again. And all the wanting in the world to change my physical characteristics wasn't going to do a thing. But when I put one foot in front of the other and added discipline or discipleship to the process and got up every morning and walked the dog for two and a half miles and changed my diet and walked the dog again in the afternoon and again in the evening, when I went back to see my doctor, I, not bragging, well, a little bit, returned to my wedding weight, cholesterol was down significantly, triglycerides were in good shape. You know, all these markers were looking much more appropriate because I had added discipline to the desire and so something was beginning to happen. It's the same is true with our spiritual lives. Uh, there are many things that we can do uh, to add discipline to our experience and you'll be talking about that as you go through Get Real. The third D is devotion.